So we're here at Coco Press at 3D Printopia and they've Woo! solved the biggest problem in 3D printing and that is plastic doesn't taste good. So instead of plastic, they print with chocolate. And the Coco Press has been around for about a year now, yep. roughly. And I have one at home, but two is better than one. So Coco Press 2 is therefore better than Coco Press 1. Naturally. And, th and this is a Coco Press 2. So Ellie, what's oh, new? Uh, what's new? Uh, three things. One, we run Quipper now. Number two is we have a new UI for it, uh, the press print UI that is open source and is running off of Clipper screen, but it is the prettiest Clipper UI you've seen. It is very nice. And if you've seen a nicer one, I would love to see it because I like looking at 3D printer UIs. <laughs> um, and then the third thing is a hot swappable extruder. So there is one button to disconnect the extruder both electrically and mechanically uh, using the Big Tree Tech Hermit Crab. And that allows you to, you know, clean it more easily. We're gonna have an external heater called Cocoa Buddy. So you'll be able to have, say, milk chocolate hot while you're printing in dark chocolate and, you know, swap it out or white chocolate so you get some nice contrast. Or just be able to swap in another one right away without having to wait the 20 minute uh, preheat cycle. Yeah, because that, that's kind of the big problem with the original Cocoa yeah. Press is when you, you either, you didn't finish the print because you ran out of chocolate or you want to print yeah. another batch, you've got to reload. You gotta wait 20 minutes. Absolutely. Now you don't. Absolutely. So this one right here is printing away. And then we have one down here that's not printing so we can take like a better yes. look at it. So let's go down here and take a look at this one. This is Coco Press 2. So the first thing is the swappable nozzle or swappable extruder. One button, you take off the whole extruder. So what, what are we using here for the uh, connection? This is the Big Tree Tech Hermit Crab, the standard version. Lots of weird stuff to make it work with chocolate because uh, we have two heaters, two thermistors, and that's just not something that most hardware natively supports. Luckily, we don't have a heated bed, so we can use some of those ports and, and things. And then in the back, I have a SKR Pico. This is wiring I did like the other day, not final stuff. Um, SKR Pico 1.2 or 1.0, Big Tree BTT Pi 1.2, and we have the SKSM so we can have safe clipper shutdowns. Uh, just, you know, if you yank power, you get about 15 or 20 extra seconds. It can shut down. And then we now have auto switching power supply so you don't have to fidget with that button anymore. Those are the new electronics on here along with the um, Hermit Crab and uh, HDMI 5. So we obviously have a capacitive touchscreen now. Um, so we got the UI here. So you're very proud of this UI. So let, let's take a look at this here. Yes. So the, the main goal was simplicity, right? Like yes. keep it simple, easy to use, because a lot of people who are buying this machine aren't 3D printer people. They're Absolutely. people that own like chocolate shops and whatnot. Absolutely. And so this UI is going to make it easier for people to get into 3D printing because it looks more like what you would expect, you know, a uh, polished software to look. That being said, I also think it honestly helps a lot of 3D printing use cases too, because if you can see exactly what the machine can do, you can operate it and play with it a little bit more. So the previous version of the Coco Press was running Marlin. Yes. And one of the big uh, complaints you received was basically uh, trying to change the profiles. That wasn't yes. really something an end user could easily do on the machine itself. Absolutely. Now, now you can, and so in here, because we're running Clipper, you can go in here and change your uh, your profiles, essentially. Yep. So you can make user presets and whatnot for and different plastic or chocolates. When you make a user preset, you can uh, adjust the temperature of the nozzle, the temperature of the body, the preheat <laughs> time, and of course, name it whatever you want to name it. And so you can save, I don't know if we have a limit on how many you can save, actually. Uh, somebody will find it at some point. Somebody will find it. And then you can also adjust our presets as well. Some people find I'm generally in a cold room. I actually like it two tenths of a degree um, warmer or, or something like that. Yes, so, because this is chocolate. It's extremely tense temperature sensitive. Yes. You have to be like one or two degrees yes. off and it won't work as good. So I am really excited to see what people do now that they can save their own profiles. Now that, you know, they can try different chocolates other than the they ones can, you recommend. Exactly, and our print screen, I think I only have one file on here, but print screen shows us, you know, full um, display image of what it is. It's things that you expect on a yeah. polished printer at so, this point. So basically this is taking the original Cocoa Press and, and refining it. It's modernized. Modernized. But it will still allow you to do some new yep. 
new cool stuff. Now, for those that are, because right now you have a pre-order for the Coco Press 2 ongoing yep. right now on the website. Um, but for those of us that have a Coco Press 1, you will be offering upgrade kits, yeah. is that correct? It'll probably be, I, I, I keep saying a price. I guess I have to stick to it now. It'll probably be uh, two hundred and fifty dollars for an upgrade kit, and that will come with all the electronics. We're doing it like close to at cost, just because I like this platform. I think this platform yeah. is going to uh, make it easier to. And, and the you know, upgrade use. itself doesn't seem too invasive because you, you no. basically just have a. Most of this stays the same. You just got a, a new tool connector. Yep, it'll be new you electronics. Know, a bunch of new extruder parts, um, and then definitely new X carriage parts. And then new electronics in the back. But you shouldn't have to like I, disassemble your machine or anything. Yeah, like no. That too all the extrusion is the same. All the CNC parts are the same. You'll get a couple new CNC parts. We're moving some of the, like this printed part and the plunger adapter inside will now be metal. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be a crazy upgrade. I think it's going to be pretty nice. And then for people who get the new machine, there'll be a few different parts, but those are just for assemblability. Um, just try to make it easier. You know? and, then, and then you were saying, we touched on it earlier, the fact that you can preheat one of these on standby. Yes. You don't have that here. You call it the Cocoa Buddy, right? Cocoa Buddy, yes. No, we don't have it here, um, but it will basically just be an extruder, a screen. And a power supply. And a power supply. It'll run completely separately from the device. So that, you know, if you're at an event or something, maybe you want to have that on the back table. If you want to have multiple, they'll just be powered independently, whatever right. it is. Um, and then we're looking into ways of like syncing your custom um, temperature settings, you know, between it. But what I should mention is this is an offline first device. It works fully offline and we're still trying to figure out if or how we're going to support online things. Well, with Clipper, you, you would have mainsail, you, like you would still yes. have the traditional Clipper UI if yeah. you want. So I currently use mainsail with it. Okay. Um, it's probably just something that we won't really support, but... Because most people are, are they still loading on with USB for this, for yes. loading files on? So just USB thumb drive? Yep, yep. And, and where's the USB port on it? Uh, well, it's currently in the back, but, but it the, will be it will, will be, be right on here. in the front? Yep. Okay. I'm so proud of it. I'm so it, proud of the machine. I, I've been having a lot of fun with mine. Yeah. It, it, anytime there's a birthday or an event, it, it, it gets pulled out and, you know, I print yeah. cocoa bombs and stuff like that. And yeah. it, it's fun to have. Yeah. And, and obviously, manufacturers, chocolatiers and whatnot, they're using them in their mm -hmm. production lines now, essentially. And the other people who are using them, school maker spaces. I oh. love the school maker spaces that are using it. We have middle school, high school, universities, everything from culinary programs yeah. and uh, food science related things to just, this is an interesting way to get middle schoolers and high schoolers interested in 3D printing. You know, you can really connect yeah. with your food. And also the best thing with this machine, you never have a failed print because at the end no. of the day, no matter what happens, you still have chocolate. It's a pre-success snack. Exactly. <laughs> um, the last thing I meant to say was, because we're on Clipper now, we're gonna be able to do a lot of upgrades in the future. We were really hitting some of the max of what we could do, especially with the user interface, but now we get to write what we want in Python. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm obviously not doing the thing where I'm selling it based on, you know, future upgrades, yep. but we are hoping to be able to bring some more functionality to it, awesome. mainly in terms of like force sensing and yeah. whatever. And uh, last question, any plans for an IDEX version in the future? Because I, I, I want a caramel extruder to go with my chocolate extruder. Are there any plans for it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> any plans to make that commercial? No, probably not. But if I get my, <laughs> if I get my together, maybe I'll auction one off at Smurf. Because I want one. <laughs> I don't and blame then, you. I want one too. <laughs> and then I need to auction one off, but not commercially. Awesome. And then people can find all the info at CocoPress.com. Yep, and all of our open source info at opensource.cocopress.com, uh, which is not updated yet for the Coco Press 2 because I need sleep sometimes. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. It's <laughs> been a busy weekend. Anyways, yes. cheers, Ellie. Appreciate it. Thank awesome. You. See ya. Cheers. So I just want to take a quick moment to give a huge shout out to LDO Motors for sponsoring this year's 3D Printopia coverage. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description.